I'm not saying that every polyp will turn into cancer. Few polyps will become cancer, but every cancer was once a polyp, okay? So the importance of this is that colorectal cancer is on the rise. Today, it's the second most common cancer in men, second only to prostate cancer, and it's the second most common cancer in women, second only to breast cancer. So it's the second most common cancer in both sexes. And it's estimated that it may, especially in men, overtake prostate cancer as the leading cause of cancer in men. So it's very important for us to understand everything about polyps, how to prevent them, what to do if we already have a polyp. So today's lesson is very important. What is a flat polyp? It would be a polyp like this, look here. This is a flat polyp, or also called a caesarean polyp, and I can also classify it as a stalked polyp, right? It would be this, this would be a pedunculated polyp, similar to a wart, called pedunculated. Well, another way of classifying polyps, which is the most important way, including how it will be described in the colonoscopy exam, I can classify it as serrated, carcinoid, tumoral, adenoma, and hyperplastic. The most common polyps are those that are classified as adenoma or hyperplastic. Hyperplastic, both adenoma and hyperplastic, we call them benign, they're benign polyps. What does a benign polyp mean? Whenever the doctor identifies a polyp, and how does he identify it? It is through an examination called a colonoscopy. What is this examination like? Colonoscopy is when the patient is anesthetized. A device is inserted into the patient's anus, which is nothing more than a video camera. And this video camera will be able to follow the path of the device. It will follow how the mucosa of this intestine is, if by chance, if during this examination, polypectomy is nothing more than the removal of the polyp. In other words, the same examination, colonoscopy, which is a diagnostic examination, where he goes in to diagnose, can also be a therapeutic examination. Why? I went in to see if there was anything there, but if I found a polyp, I'm going to remove it. In other words, I'm already treating it. I'm already reducing the likelihood of that polyp turning into cancer one day. But when that doctor locates a polyp, removes it through a procedure called a polypectomy, that polyp is sent to the pathological anatomist, and the pathological anatomist will bring back a report saying whether it was a polyp, an adenoma, whether it was hyperplastic, whether it was serrated, and the vast majority of them are 100% benign polyps. In other words, a simple polyp, which we can't talk about as a simple polyp, is normal. It's not. The presence of a polyp in the intestine already tells us that there's something wrong with this person, and then we understand what it might be, what the defects might be. No, even though polyps are common nowadays, they can't be seen as something normal, and you can't just ignore this information, can you? Not at all. So what do we know? We know that if a patient undergoes such an examination, identifies the polyp, removes it, sends it to pathology, and gets a benign report, that patient is required to have another colonoscopy two years later. Stay until the end, because this topic is very important for your health. And don't forget to tell me if you have any experience with this topic, or if you know someone who has. What part of the world are you from? Write that down below so we can interact. Here we go. You can't go more than two years without repeating this test, okay? What is the recommended age for patients to start having colonoscopies? Let's put it on the board here. All patients, 100% of patients at the age of 45. Now, if there is a case of colorectal cancer in the family, a family history of colorectal cancer, 40, I usually tell patients the following, 40, for me, is not the age I use as a cutoff only for those who have a family history of cancer, colorectal cancer in the family. 
I also use 40 as a cutoff for patients who have had a lot of changes in their bowels throughout their lives, who have reported a lot of diarrhea or very constipated bowels, constipation. I only use 45 for patients who have no family history of bowel cancer and have never had any complaints related to the digestive system. In terms of adenomas here, which are the most common intestinal polyps, we'll show you their classification, okay? The adenoma can be tubular, which is the most common here. Tubular, it can be tubulovillus, or it can be villus. From the mildest to the most dangerous, the villus adenoma is the one that can most easily develop into adenocarcinoma. What is adenocarcinoma? This is intestinal cancer. Look at it. Adenoma and adenocarcinoma are two completely different things. Adenocarcinoma is cancer. So if the patient removes a polyp, sends it to pathology, and it comes back as adenocarcinoma, well, there was cancer there. And now the doctor has to decide. He has to see if that cancer was removed with a free margin. If it wasn't, then it depends a lot on each case, right? You'll have to remove more of the intestine. There's no rule. It really depends on each situation, right? Now, each of these stages, whether tubular, tubulovillus, villus, it can, if you don't remove it, right? Let's say there is a polyp there, the patient doesn't know. This polyp, it will go through a process of dysplasia. And this dysplasia, which will be in any degree here, it will be a low-grade dysplasia, which can develop to moderate or medium-grade, moderate, medium, or high-grade dysplasia, right? What would be the worst situation? The worst situation is a high-grade dysplastic villus adenoma, which is a polyp with a high probability of becoming an adenocarcinoma, right? As a precaution, if my patient has been examined and it turns out to be a high-grade dysplastic villus adenoma, even if it's not cancer, it's a benign polyp, I don't wait two years to examine my patient again. What is nervous gastritis? It's a patient who produces a lot of gastric juice due to excessive stress. And this will generate acidity throughout the intestines. And this will cause you to start promoting dysbiosis. I'm even going to put stress here because stress will cause intestinal dysbiosis, okay? So cigarettes, a constipated or too loose bowel, stress, low fiber intake, low water intake, and you want to see something fundamental here. A risk factor? A sedentary lifestyle. Why a sedentary lifestyle? Because when you do physical activity, you improve the peristalsis of your intestines. What is peristalsis? It's the peristaltic movement of the intestines that moves the fecal bolus toward the anus, right? Which is exactly the movement that allows you to evacuate normally without force without any of that, okay? So look here, get some exercise, drink plenty of water, eat a high fiber diet. There are some studies that are more observational, but they have shown that excess red meat is also associated with an increase in polyps. Imagine waking up one morning and realizing something feels off. You've been feeling tired for weeks now, despite getting enough sleep. Nothing seems to explain this lingering fatigue. And then you notice a subtle shift in your daily routine. Maybe it's your digestion, or perhaps the way your body feels as you go through the day. Changes you might overlook at first, but over time, they become hard to ignore. This is where things start to feel real, right? We all have days where our energy levels dip, or we experience discomfort. But what if these little changes in your body's rhythm are signals of something deeper, something happening inside that you can't see? It's easy to dismiss unusual fatigue or digestive shifts as just part of life's busy demands. But what if they're clues to something more serious? When the body speaks, it's often in whispers at first. Those whispers could be signs of something as life-altering as colon cancer. 
The subtle warnings begin with a change in bowel habits, something as simple as going to the bathroom more often or noticing that it's harder to go at all. The body's signs aren't always loud. They could be things like abdominal pain that seems to come and go, or maybe a lingering sense that your stomach just doesn't feel right. You tell yourself it's just stress, maybe something you ate or not drinking enough water. But what if it's not? What if these signals are your body's way of trying to get your attention? The discomfort could evolve into something more persistent, making you feel more bloated, more uneasy after meals, and maybe you even start to notice blood where it shouldn't be. These moments can feel frightening, but they're important. The idea of something like colon cancer is terrifying, but what's even more important is understanding that early signs, when caught, can change everything. And that's the point. You can listen to your body before it's too late. If we think about it, the body has an amazing way of adapting. That's why some of these symptoms don't scream at you from the start. A little fatigue, a minor change in weight, and you might not even connect the dots. But these early symptoms are worth paying attention to, especially as they could signal something that could be life-saving if detected early. Does it seem unsettling? It's meant to be. Your body is always in communication with you. Sometimes it's about tuning in. You might notice you're losing weight without even trying. At first, it seems like a blessing, but when paired with other symptoms, like changes in bowel habits or even slight bleeding, it can be a sign of something much larger. Picture this, the cells inside your colon starting to act abnormally, consuming your body's energy, draining nutrients that would normally go to healthier parts of your body. It's subtle, like a slow burn, but one that intensifies over time. Think about how common these feelings are, feeling drained, the loss of energy, or unexplained weight loss. It could just be life, right? But what if, in these small daily moments, your body is already fighting something bigger, something that it's trying to make you aware of before it's too late? Now, what if all it takes is one step, one test, one visit to the doctor that could put all your worries at ease or help you take control if the worst case scenario is unfolding inside you. Colonoscopies, those often dreaded procedures, are more than just preventive care. They're a life-saving measure. Imagine being able to catch a potential threat early on and taking action before it becomes unmanageable. That's what the early signs of colon cancer offer a chance to stay ahead. So, with this in mind, have you ever considered how often we ignore these signals because we're too busy? How many times have we brushed off fatigue as part of getting older, or passed off discomfort as simply a consequence of stress? Hold on to this thought as we dive deeper into the journey our bodies take. Your health is something worth fighting for, worth paying attention to, these small signs might be telling you more than you think, but the story doesn't end here. There's more to discover as we peel back the layers of what these signs truly mean and how they can change your life if you let them. Let's take a step further. Imagine you've started paying attention to these signs, the ones your body has been whispering. You decide it's time to check things out to not let these changes go unnoticed. The doctor schedules a colonoscopy and you feel a mix of dread and hope. But here's the thing, this one moment, this decision to investigate can change everything. It's the moment where awareness turns into action. You might feel nervous about the results, but imagine the relief of knowing what's going on inside your body and having the power to do something about it. Let's talk about what happens when colon cancer starts to develop. The changes might be slow, so subtle, that they're easy to overlook. Maybe it begins with a polyp, something small and seemingly harmless. You'd never feel it, 
never know it was there. But over time, if left unchecked, that tiny growth can start to turn into something more dangerous. The cells begin to multiply in ways they shouldn't, gradually forming a tumor. And once that tumor takes hold, it starts to drain your energy, your strength, and even your body's ability to function normally. Here's the harsh reality. Colon cancer doesn't always show up with loud, unmistakable symptoms. It's sneaky. One day you're feeling a bit more tired than usual, and the next, you're struggling with severe abdominal pain that won't go away. Or maybe you notice blood in your stool, and suddenly, that creeping suspicion becomes too hard to ignore. By now you've seen how something so small and seemingly insignificant, a change in bowel habits, a little unexplained weight loss, can escalate into a life-threatening situation. It's scary, no doubt. But here's the part that so many people miss. Colon cancer, when caught early, is highly treatable. In fact, with early detection, the survival rate is incredibly high. This isn't just about fighting cancer. It's about giving yourself the best chance at life by taking control of your health before it's too late. So, what does early detection look like? It starts with a simple decision to listen to your body, to not brush off symptoms because you're too busy or because you think it's just stress. It means getting that colonoscopy or even a simple test to check for blood in your stool. It's about knowing your family history, understanding your risk factors and making sure you stay vigilant as you get older. Think about it. How much time do we spend worrying about things that don't matter while neglecting our own health? This is your wake-up call to prioritize yourself. Now let's imagine the worst-case scenario. What if you are diagnosed with colon cancer? Yes, it's terrifying. But with modern treatments like surgery, chemotherapy, and even newer, less invasive procedures, the outlook can be much more hopeful than you might expect. In many cases, catching the cancer early can lead to a full recovery, allowing you to return to your normal life. That's the power of early detection. It gives you options. It gives you hope. And most importantly, it gives you time. But let's go back to that moment when you first noticed something was wrong. The tiredness, the abdominal pain, the changes in your bowel movements. If you'd ignored them, what would have happened? How much longer would you have waited before taking action? And how much more difficult would it have been to treat the cancer if it had progressed further? It's not a pleasant thought, but it's a necessary one. We often don't take our health seriously until we're forced to. We push through discomfort, assuming it will pass. But colon cancer is one of those things that doesn't just go away. It requires action, awareness, and yes, sometimes the courage to face our fears. So here's the question for you. Have you noticed any changes in your body recently that you might have been ignoring? Think back over the last few months. How have you been feeling? Have there been any signs, however small, that maybe something isn't quite right? It's time to take that step, to listen to your body and to prioritize your health. You only get one chance to stay ahead of something like this. Make it count. This is where the journey of awareness becomes a path to empowerment. You are in control but only if you take that control into your own hands. What comes next is up to you. It's not just about avoiding a diagnosis. It's about living your life to the fullest, without fear of what could be lurking beneath the surface. The choice to act is yours, and it's one that can save your life. Before we go any further, I want to let you know that I'm going to leave a link for you to click on in the description below with our Healthy Eating Guide with recipes that explain how to cleanse your organs, arteries, and body with natural homemade recipes 
so you can prevent future health problems. There's even a tutorial that teaches you how to grow herbs at home to make teas. Take a look and then come back and tell our team what you think. Okay, if you've watched this far, click the like button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our health tips and it's very important that you share this knowledge with your friends and family.